In this video, I'm going to be showing you how we can take a scene that we've rendered in Karma and apply some post-processing effects to it using a slap comp in Houdini. So we're going to be using Copernicus to apply a slap comp to what we see in our viewport. And then I'll be showing you how to also render that out to disk, directly applying any of the changes that we made in our cop network to the render that we're saving to disk. To begin with, I just have a scene, so we can take a look at this. It's just these few pieces of geometry, then a material linker, applying some of these materials to each one of these pieces of geometry, a Karma physical sky node, and a camera. Now, if we go over here and switch this to the Karma XPU view, you can see what we have. And before we go on from here, it's going to be useful for me to explain a concept that you may already be familiar with, but this is just going to be render passes. So on the right-hand side of our viewport, we have this render outputs option over here. If we click on it, you'll see a dropdown, and by default, it's showing us the color. If we click on depth, it'll show this red. That's just because it is a float value, so it's only showing as a red channel but this is going to be the depth for our render. So objects that are closer are going to appear darker, objects that are further are going to appear lighter. As for normals, these are just the normals of our objects. Then we have primvars ST. ST is the same as UV. Only one of our objects has UVs. Then we have primID and instance ID. Those are similar to crypto mats in that it's just a unique ID per object. Now, the reason I'm showing you these right now is that when we work with a slap comp, we're going to be working with these various layers. We're going to be doing all sorts of operations with these, and then we're going to output post-processed versions of these. Now, you may be wondering where these are actually being generated because we don't have any nodes that are actually generating these, but these are the default ones that are generated for us. However, if we render to disk, Houdini doesn't actually render these to disk. The main reason is we have these in our viewport, but when we save to disk, we generally want to save space, so there's no point in saving all of these unless explicitly asked. And this is going to become important later because we may be working with a slap comp where we're assuming that these exist in our rendered image, but when we render to disk, these won't actually exist. So that's just something to keep in mind a little bit later. I'll revisit it when it becomes relevant. So let's go ahead and actually create a slap comp. The way we do this is by dropping a cop network. And this is not the cop network old, it's just the regular cop network. Dropping this over here, we can rename it to comp. And if we dive inside, you won't see anything. That's because we've moved from the Solaris level to the Copernicus level. And to actually bring in our image from our viewport, we have a few options. So we're going to use the slap comp import. And if we go to the parameters for this, you'll see that there's a number of AOVs set to zero. If we were to add one and just type C, that'll bring in our beauty pass. Or alternatively, we can just bring in all of the AOVs from that render. You'll see that these match what we saw in our viewport. Now we have this image being brought in. And this is what was last rendered in our viewport. If we were to change what's rendered in our viewport, we can reload the image, but it will actually dynamically import whatever was last rendered. We can also go to the composite view and view this as an image in a 2D plane. And we could then make adjustments to this. But the way that we're going to be doing it is by using the slap comp block. And this is a bit different because what it actually does is it compiles this block over here and we can reference this block end at our stage level. I'll show you what that means shortly, but right over here under the slap comp import, it's doing the same thing that we had before, this time only bringing in C and depth. If we were to say add AOVs from last render, it'll do the same thing. Once again, connecting up all of these. I'm not going to do that for now. For now, we can just work on this block begin. So in this block begin, we're bringing in C and depth. C is going to be our beauty pass. So we can do something like a glow. So let's do a glow on our C. Right, you'll see it just applies this glow, increasing the threshold slightly, we have something like that. And let's also do some chromatic aberration. Right, so we have some post-processing being done to this image. And if we go back up to the stage level, you may expect to see that in your viewport, but it won't actually show up. What we need to do is enable our slap comp in our viewport. We do this under these render outputs. The option right beneath it is for slap comps. If you right click on it, it'll find all of the block ends that exist within the stage level. And so we only have the one. And if we left click on it, it will apply it to our viewport. Now, keep in mind that this isn't limited to just a camera view. If we were to move around in our viewport, it'll always apply this post-processing. As you can see, we have a glow and chromatic aberration applied no matter how we navigate in this scene. If we were to go back to our comp, you could see that it is now taking whatever was last rendered in our viewport, regardless of if we're rendering from a camera view. So it's always just fetching whatever was last rendered. So let's go back to our camera view, disable our slap comp, 
and let's actually start working on some sort of effect. So inside of this cop network, we can begin working on simplifying the shading because the look that we're going for here is going to be something of a painterly effect. And the way we do that is by firstly creating something similar to a tune shader. So we're going to take our beauty pass and we're going to extract the color and the values so that we can adjust each one individually. The way that we do this is by using an RGBA to mono. If we take this and plug in our color, this just gives us a grayscale image or the values. So we can rename this to values. Then we'll use a divide node, taking our color and our values into second input. And when we divide, we'll be left with just the color. So we can rename this one to color. Now do keep in mind that all of these blend nodes that we're using are going to actually affect alpha as well. So when we divide, it's not just going to divide RGB. Now I'm mentioning this now because at a later point, this is going to become an issue. I'm going to leave it enabled for now so that you can see what that issue is at a later point. So if we now take a multiply and then multiply our colors back with our values, it'll give us what we started with, right? So we'll go from this block begin and this is what we rendered in our viewport and we end up with the exact same image. However, the difference is that now we've separated our values and our colors and we can now make adjustments to either one of these. One thing that we could do is now a quantize so if we were to quantize our values, you can see that it gives this sort of tune shaded effect or cell shaded, and we can set this to closest and choose how many segments of color we want. Now, I find that this isn't the best way because it tends to be quite sharp. And there is another way of doing this, and that is through a remap node. So if we drop a remap over here, what we can do is on our ramp, just select multiple points all the way along, and then just click and drag every second one over to the nearest one. What that'll do is it'll squash these ranges together. So there'll be flat areas of color, and this gives us this separation. So as you can see, we're going from this to this. Now you will see that it's quite grainy, and that's simply because we have very smooth gradients. So at the areas in between, because it's a smooth gradation, each one of these pixels gets either one color or the other. And so we don't end up with very smooth gradation. Now there's not too much that we can do about that, but by the time we've done all of our other post-processing effects, that won't really be too much of an issue. The next thing I'm going to use is a denoise node. So denoise TVD, this one right here. Now we don't want it to smooth out this much, so we can decrease the speed slightly and increase the iterations until we find something that we're happy with. So I think that that looks quite good. Now you can see that we go from this, where our values have a lot of range to them, to this sort of look, where they're smoothed off and we end up with segmented areas that all share similar values. Now, when we multiply this back with our color, we have a very different look. So we've gone from this to this. An interesting thing that you can do on your color is you can quantize this as well. For this part, I might not be doing it, but I just want to show you what that might look like if we reduce these colors. You can end up with quite an abstract look, right? So it limits the number of colors that we're using for this, and that ends up looking interesting as well. For now, I'm not going to be using that, and we can just plug this into our block end. So these few things that we've done over here, let's put them into a subnetwork and we can just call this subnetwork simplified shading. If we go up a level to our scene view, we can enable our slap comp and we can now see it in our viewport. Now you may notice this weird noise that's occurring in certain areas. And that's actually because of what I mentioned earlier. Inside of here, where we have our multiply and our divide, these are running over the alpha channels. This means that we end up with certain areas where alpha is being multiplied by a color value, and we may end up with our alpha being reduced to a value of zero. So just disable this for both of them. We don't want our alpha being affected in any of our blend operations. If we go back up a level, you'll see that it now works correctly. So this is already looking quite painterly, but the effect that I want to add next is a sort of distortion based on brush strokes, as well as lighting elements based on brush strokes. So we'll be addressing that in the next part where we go into creating a painterly post-processing effect with our slap comps. Mm -hmm.